Hey everyone, it's Sean Lan, and I am super happy to be coming to you uh, here in this video series, teaching you a little bit about how to use Polygon, uh, introducing you to the world, world of Web3, and um, doing some case studies and an overview of why Polygon is special. You should start using Polygon right now, building dApps, um, you know, or maybe Polygon-based dApps that are already deployed. Um, and uh, yeah, we can, we can, I, I, I just want to introduce myself a little bit. Um, with this quick video, I'm Sean. Uh, I work here at Polygon as a dev role engineer, um, and it's my job to essentially uh, help bridge and onboard um, a lot of people uh, from web from the Web two space who want to go into Web three. Um, as it's a pressing problem nowadays. Um, so I hope that this uh, little lesson will be a kind of really a good beginner res resource to you on how do you. Um, you know, build with Web3 and maybe, uh, maybe um, how do you, start, starting off with how do you use Web3 and what exactly is Polygon and helping you get that understanding. Um, so this course is going to be a little bit less technical. It's going to be a more of a high level overview of the ecosystem, uh, how Polygon works, and um, a little bit about how you can bridge onto Polygon, start using Polygon today in both interacting with dApps and um, with, with deploying dApps. Um, we have a second course coming out soon that, are, that is a little bit more technical, that's more focused on actual DAP development uh, and showing off a few of the educational resources that we have uh, for that specifically. Um, and so cool. Uh, thanks a ton for watching this video. Uh, in the next one, I'll be telling you a little bit more about um, you know, what Ethereum is and then what Polygon is and why is there such a big problem with uh, you know the Ethereum ecosystem nowadays. So uh, go check that out. Thanks so much for watching. All right, so now we're gonna talk a little bit more about um, why you need uh, Polygon. Uh, so um, first of all, uh, Ethereum scaling is pretty hard because a lot of different projects require a lot of different like scaling needs. So if you wanted to mint like 10,000 NFTs, right, that's probably slightly different than if like millions of traders are constantly arbitraging on your platform, <laughs> Uniswap, um, so, uh, or Sushi, uh, Sushi Swap. So, um, and we're going to kind of take a little look at these different dApps slightly later. Um, but just for now, you just need to know that Ethereum scaling is diverse and it's a hard problem to solve because um, there's a lot of Ethereum like ETH killers nowadays that you hear out you know hear about in the market um, and uh, we wanted to, Polygon essentially wanted to build something that integrates perfectly with ETH um, so as long as you know how to develop on native Ethereum you should know how to develop on Polygon um, and wouldn't it be a big deal to move over so. Um, what Polygon is effectively is uh, a multi-chain like Ethereum scaling aggregator because you know these different, essentially these different um means of scaling are so like diverse, essentially uh because we have like so many different technologies that we can use to help you scale and um different projects need different scaling needs. Um, we have a lot of different blockchains that we like we have uh you know for you so. Uh, what we're going to be going over with this like quick course is going to be the Polygon Proof of Stake, which is live right now. You can use it, and it's kind of like the main like flagship product right now. But um, there are, as our security standards kind of uh, increase and get better, um, we have ZK rollups uh, that are also in the the progress of building. And as a result, uh, Polygon Nightfall, Maiden, and Zero. Uh, will be coming out uh, later this year and early early next year, um, and uh, it'll it's kind of um, you know so uh, you know the kind of whole purpose of this is to kind of build a um, a network that you can just build on top of Ethereum and then access here um, on on Polygon. Um, so we want to essentially just cater to all the people that already know how to develop on Ethereum but just want faster um, and scalable DApps. And um, there's a lot of resources, uh, honestly, on the network. Um, and namely, uh, what I'm talking about in terms of resources is like a lot of um, people that are willing to help you develop, uh, like developer communities. 
uh, if you're in, like, for example, we have, like, these, I'm personally in university, and we have these, um, like, initiatives that essentially help you set up, like, a local guild uh, of Polygon developers. So if you want, like, friends to develop with you and kind of hone your developer skills like that, um, yeah, like, by, by all means, I think you should, you know, I like, you should start a guild or something like that. But ju- that's just an example of, like, um, the fact that we have a lot of resources to help you develop. And on top of those resources, uh, these are just a few numbers on, um, you know, how how great, well, Polygon is. Um, you, ha- you have super, super low block time. Uh, Ethereum main chain has, like, around 10 to 15 seconds of block time. We have two seconds. That's about, like, five times faster. And uh, the average transaction cost here is, like, less than a cent. And I want to just show you a little bit of something um, as well, you can actually see on the blo- various blockchain explorers. If you go to Etherscan, which is like Ethereum's main blockchain explorer, um, you know, right now, every day it's like around like 1 million transactions, right? But on Polygon, um, this number was, this number when it was like super popular, like way back then, um, let me show you. It was all, it was up to like 8 million um when it, when like matic was, uh, the proof of stake sidechain was like freshly new in june um and i mean honestly it's still in my opinion i think it's like it, it's still pretty active recently you know like 3 million transactions a day isn't bad um but i wanted to kind of pay real attention closely to um gas dot uh ethereum wait gas tracker yeah there it is so Etherscan uh, Gas Tracker provides you with approximately the amount of money that it takes to make any transaction. And on Ethereum, it's like lowest of the low is like $8. Um, $8 isn't even realistic uh, in my in my personal experience. Never had a transaction that cost $8 ever since like a year ago. Um, but uh, on Polygon, it's like literally less than a cent. So you can imagine how many times cheaper it is um it's like 700x i don't know uh but uh the point is transactions are super cheap and transaction costs are a huge issue on ethereum because um imagine wanting to literally just go for let's say like a uniswap transaction and then your transaction costing more than well you know like what what you wanted to to swap for right um and as such this makes polygon a super like beginner friendly ecosystem because uh the average person at least uh some of my friends um chucked like 20 to 50 bucks into ethereum to like experiment right but then they they can like never get the money out because like gas fees are just so intense so um if you want to on like natively on ramp onto polygon uh you can essentially just skip all the gas fees um and 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 just play with the blockchain um you know like just just as it is uh and because polygon is a fully functional blockchain you can have access to 3000 dApps uh and a high tvl network um with the comfort of literally not paying a lot of fees at all um and if you want to mint your own tokens develop uh we have all the essentially all the tools that you need to do that and all the assets are obviously secured on Ethereum through these uh, plasma checkpoint nodes that we were talking about slightly earlier in the last video. Cool. Um, so in the next one, I'm going to be showing you a little bit more about uh, kind of the roadmap um, and a little, you know, a little bit of just the basic things that you need to start uh, playing with. All right, guys. Uh, so as a continuation of the last video, um, I wanted to show a little bit about, I guess, the more technical side of Polygon. Um, so... Uh, this isn't going to take very long. Um, it's just going to be like the basics. Um, all you need to know as a developer, if you want to build anything on Polygon, is that Polygon is backward compatibility. So whatever you're using, uh, like you know JavaScript, if you're using like Truffle or Hard Hat, um, and then obviously Solidity, you can use all of these same dev tools uh, to you know, deploy dApps on Polygon, which means that um, if you're kind of like also go, if you want to take your dApps to production or like, you know, like take some sort of DeFi dApps to production specifically, um, you can also, you know, fuzz and contract test that way um, and, and kind of expect the same levels of security and kind of same security like measures that you should test for uh, before going to release. Um, 
and of course the same concerns essentially that uh you're typically subject to um when you're you know doing solidity dapps such as uh making sure that your um i guess some of your functions are uh you know owner only um or uh inheriting various other solidity based libraries from let's say like open zeppelin um all of that still applies um and so if, if you're a developer it's very 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 easy to deploy in polygon um and actually just to show you a really really quick example um one of these one of the easiest things actually to do is to de deploy in polygon is if you take like a like an already finished app right i'm going to just pop up like an already finished app um let's do like this one um so if uh, if this is built via hard hat and for hard hat users uh same thing for truffle users um you need to just go down to this uh module.exports thing in your uh config and then um make sure to list uh polygon or mumbai as one of the networks the uh process is kind of similar to connecting uh to metamask except um you're you're, you're you know you're just specifying the window now, I I think of like RPC URLs like the windows to the blockchain, right? You're using um, someone's node services to uh, deploy DApps onto the blockchain, and so uh, you can you essentially just make sure to list uh, you know uh, your RPC URL, how much max gas you're willing to pay, and the amount uh, the account that you're trying to deploy with. Um, uh, the the great thing about uh, Scaffold ETH, which is what I'm building on. Is the fact that uh, it already has a thing that generates a like a burner account mnemonic for you, um, which essentially is just like uh, you know when when you do yarn run generate uh, in your console, you uh, generate a deploy account uh, which will deploy your smart contract for you, and you don't have to use your own account. Um, but by all means, use your own account if you want. Um, same thing with any front end hooks. So I know that uh, some of you might be like users of uh, ETH hooks and, uh, you know, also from Scaffold ETH. Uh, if not, don't worry about it. Um, for, uh, but I mean, this also applies, <clears throat> sorry, just generally for any smart contract. Um, if you're essentially, uh, you know, trying to deploy a front end that has hooks um, that are based on like, which network you're you're you're, you're uh, deploying to? The process is relatively also similar. You would also have a constants.js file that has like all of your various networks, and the same thing is going on here, where um, just like you would have mainnet and covan listed, you would also have um, Mumbai and Polygon. Uh, I don't think I, yeah, Polygon. Uh, it, it used to be me named Matic. That's why it's called Matic here. Um, but yeah. Uh, so it, it it should be it should be relatively simple on the developer side. Um, in the next I guess like course that we're doing, we'll be more doing more of a technical deep dive on that. Um, but yeah, that's essentially all, all what you need to know for, as as like a developer. Before um, I guess for both developers and users, I think that um. Uh, the consensus mechanisms that Polygon runs on is also relatively simple to explain. Um, let me just see here. Um, so in the docs, there should be like a resource for you that's uh, that essentially details um, like what exactly like is Polygon uh, and the specific consensus mechanisms that are in play here, um, which once again isn't at all different from like you know normal. If you want to set up a full a full node. Um, there are, uh, there's quite a lot, a lot, a lot of really good guides uh, here, uh, in the network details, uh, specifically regarding like minimal technical requirements and, uh, how do you deploy a full node for the Polygon name, uh, mainnet? Um, you can do this via Ansible slash Python, um, and uh, also, um, you can also just do this on a binary, um, and essentially how uh the consensus works is uh you ha you would have a lot of nodes right remember what I, I i said in a previous video that like ethereum is kind of like voltron you have a lot of nodes uh and kind of different computers connecting and playing on the network um similar thing with polygon you can you can try to fire up a full node um and uh you can you can use many different ways to do so 
correct. Um, and yeah, and uh, essentially, I like to think of boar nodes, and, and so um, yeah, so boars are the individual like node clients that you're gonna have, and I like to think of boar as like a um kind of like booting up a geth node if you're familiar yeah so it's a basic geth implementation with custom changes um and uh if you're familiar with booting up geth um i don't know if you'd be watching this video <laughs> um but uh yeah it, essentially um boar is a uh like a, like a kind of like a block producer um like operator on polygon and Heimdall is kind of the heart, and it manages various things like consensus, um, you know, like validators, uh, you know, I guess, like, who produces the blocks, uh, like, state syncing between Ethereum. Um, oh, well, it says, <laughs> I just I just realized that it says so also here, but, um, you know, you, you get the point. Uh, and um, I don't think you necessarily need to, like, you know, delve super deep into um all of this if you're curious though definitely do be sure to like check this out but um essentially it just makes sure this essentially just says that you um uh this encoder helps to verify all transactions that happens on polygon sidechain on the ethereum mainnet and um you know uh also transactions are basic transactions um, you uh, essentially trigger these things called state changes uh, whenever you make a transaction. And how the blockchain essentially works is like every single time you transfer someone money or send coins, interact with a protocol or sign a message, you trigger a state change. And um, it, it, what what that does is it it's like it's like you know how I'm filming this video right now and how each period of time I'm speak I'm, I'm like t saying a different word, right? Um, if I've said a word, you can't, you literally can't just like revert the word, right? And how everything continues to continue throughout time. A similar concept happens in the blockchain where, um, you know, your state continues to move on um, and, and, and continues to essentially be locked in block by block, transaction by transaction. And all of these states, uh, all of these states um, gain essentially reality by um, like a uh, finality. Like finality uh, is is just essentially the transactions are confirmed on the chain, and it's like this transaction exists. It's legit. Um, you know, it's it's a real thing, and uh, it's 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 actually there. Um, and it can't it can't really be reverted, unless of course you, you try to like do like a fraud proof challenge with um various like zk rollup type uh like uh scaling solutions that we're currently building um but that's i guess that's a little bit even more advanced and i think by the time you understand that um i don't think you'd be watching this video um but yeah that's essentially what you need to know you just need to know that um if you want to fire up a bore node uh it's similar to the process for if you want to like fire up a geth node um, and there are full guides on the Polygon docs for if you, if you do actually want to fire up your own node. Um, and, uh, a few, and so, and so I, I don't think you need to really, like, understand anything specific about the blockchain, uh, besides for the fact that each block gains finality on, um, the basis that everyone on the network confirms the block and runs like calculations to confirm the block's like validity, and the fact that uh, each block has a, s a specific like time that it takes to confirm, um, and you know just the fact that Polygon has a way shorter time for that, and uh, all of our transactions are essentially confirmed on uh, Ethereum mainnet for finality, uh, and it, it gets locked in on. Um, the main kind of data execution settlement layer um, that is like super secure and decentralized, um, and so I think that's that's kind of the the key lesson to take away here is the fact that like oh, well, I'll be repeating myself a lot, but you should appreciate the fact that um, you know despite being a kind of like a side chain, yeah, like like a sort of side chain, um, that we do take as many measures at the proof of stake sidechain as possible to make sure that um, 
you know, all transactions are at least retain some sort of decentralized, uh, like some degree of decentralization and um, high amounts of security. And the fact that you can, you know, query all these transactions or, oh, well, uh, maybe not query them on mainnet. Um, you can't query them on uh, the Polygon Scan Blockchain Explorer, though, uh, because all, well, transactions and blocks will be finalized. But, um, you know, you'll, you'll, uh, you know, this is all, this is all there for you to see. Um, and it's, it's all public information. So, um, yeah, thanks a ton. Hey guys. So we're going to do a small case study of, uh, some various dApps that you can use that are deployed on Polygon. Um, and I'll give you some resources on how to find more and kind of also the reason why you want to use this on Polygon instead of just normal Ethereum. So, um, here we go. So if you're into DeFi and if you want to generate some quick passive income for yourself, um, there's several options you can uh you can you can exchange tokens on um sushi like if you want to do like i i guess some sort of arbitrage to try to earn money um but what i like what i personally like to do is either uh go to uh liquidity pools and go lp um lping just means that you're depositing money for um other people to use to swap because that's how i guess that's how mar you know automated market makers work you de you, you deposit money and uh, based on the amount of supply that you have in the total pool, um, people can swap money back and forth using your funds, but you'll earn fees um, as long as, and as long as the price doesn't shift too far from what it was originally when you deposited, you'll continue earning big loads of money. But um, that aside, you can also, if you want to go for like a more, I guess, a safer option, um, you, you can go deposit some of your uh, funds into your uh, onsen pools. And um, the main reason why you want to do this, you know, why specific on Polygon and why not on just normal Ethereum is because if you go to, let's say if we go to like normal Ethereum, right? Like let's, if we go on something like Uniswap, which is like the, some, you know, almost the exact same thing as SushiSwap. If you go to uh, Uni, right? And we we connect our wallet. Um, all right, let me just connect my wallet here. So if we just connect our wallet here. Um, we're gonna see that uh, poly on Polygon, if you want to do any sort of transaction, let's say if I wanted to swap like eighty Matic into Ave, right? Um, the fee, the, the price, uh, or sorry, the the network fees are gonna be extraordinarily low. But if we do this on normal Ethereum, say if we want to swap like just any token into, um into another token, let's say like if I wanted to swap like one ETH into, um, you know, one inch, right? Um, I mean, it's the same process, just like different tokens, but you'll see that the network fees are like a ton higher. Um, and typically this isn't just, I guess your, your normal fees, you know what I mean? It's like, um, this spe specifically what I'm more so talking about is just, um, you know, gas fees. So right now, um, at the moment, Gas fees are uh, pretty low, but um, this number can easily spike up to around a hundred or two hundred dollars. Um, so you know it's 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 definitely great to use Polygon for the use case, even if it is twenty dollars. I'm sure you wouldn't want to pay twenty dollars just to swap some of your funds over. Um, and you know, same thing with Ave. So uh, if you go on Ave and um, if you go on, let's say uh, like you want if you want to deposit right deposit some more funds into Ave to get passive yield uh kind of like a similar concept to how you would have on uniswap or sushi swap pools except this is just as like a lend borrow specific protocol which means that you deposit your money um, other people lend it out for uh, a specific uh, amount of interest and uh, if they can't return the loan their loan gets liquidated uh, and they and liquidators essentially you get premiums or bonuses or to be incentivized to liquidate um, these loans. Uh, but in the end, because these loans are collateralized, um, you'll, you know, either way you'll get your money back. But um, of course, for the cost of them using your money, you'll get some APY. And uh, this is why you want to use Aave on Polygon. So, so right now I just need to switch my network here just to show you how this looks like on normal Ethereum. So if I want to deposit like 160 bucks USDC, right? This is going to cost me $50. 
because uh, just because of gas fees alone. Um, as you can see here, it's 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 uh it's pretty huge. It's, like, it's pretty staggering. But if we push this over to Polygon Mainnet Markets, go to Ave Polygon. Go I'll probably go to Matic and then deposit some Matic. If we wanted, to, let's say if I wanted to deposit all my Matic, right? You'll you'll see here that the the gas fee is basically nothing. Um, so this is kind of the benefit generally towards using DApps on uh, Polygon because it charges effectively no money. Um, 0.01 Matic is basically a cent, a cent or two cents. Um, and I'm sure you'd much rather have that over the, <laughs> over the 50 bucks worth of gas fees on, um, you know, on Ethereum. I mean, that's like a solid, like the solid, like 50 times 50 is like 2,500. So 2,500 time like difference. Um, that's, yeah. So that's pretty, pretty significant. Obviously the, the gas fees, depending on, uh, network volume can change, uh, somewhat quickly, but um, I mean, it's all going to stay under one cent, so it's not it's not a, that big of a worry at all. Great. So um, if you want to check out more DeFi dApps, uh, DeFi Llama has a really good kind of tracker for um, everything DeFi. And you can just go right here to Polygon and uh, you'll be able to see all of these different dApps on Polygon that you can stake your money in, get some passive income. And uh, the APR, and, and, sorry, the AP, yeah, the APR slash APY is in my opinion, a lot better than traditional finance, where if you were to like, I guess, buy some stocks, um, average return is about like, about like 9% per year, right? Um, some of these pools yield up to around 20, like an, a solid 20% on average. And uh, some of the riskier and obviously newer pools um, yield up to like a, around a, like 50 to 100%. Um, so it's, it's really, really great. Um, and so just some, I guess some other dApps that I can definitely, uh, that I can show you. Um, there's this also, uh, also another one called uh, Chidao, which is kind of similar to um, Sushi in the sense that you can like, uh, you know, have pools to stake in. And these various pools are, it's, this is kind of like a, the, this, this farm is a farm aggregator where uh, this Chidao takes farms from a lot of other dApps like quick swap or uh curve and uh it's listed right here so as you see a platform quick a quick swap so this is kind of like a multi-chain like you know um farm aggregator and you can also uh essentially mint um you know mint, mint my stable coins if you want to and uh yeah i i, I just think that i typically use the the farm feature um, or if you want to, you can, uh, deposit some yield bearing tokens for, uh, APR. Um, but yeah, I typically just use the farm feature. And so, yeah, there's, there's a whole list of apps here that you can check out that are, uh, mostly DeFi based, but, um, kind of moving on to the NFT side of things. Uh, there's also a reason why you would also want to mint NFTs on Polygon instead of uh, mainnet Ethereum for the same reason. So if you're kind of like a, not not necessarily like a small artist, but if your art wants to kind of, if you want to make your art really, really accessible and uh, kind of appeal to non-blockchain uh, or like new to the blockchain um, users or, or buyers, you would definitely want to deposit this on Polygon for the same reasons. Um, because if you deposit on mainnet Ethereum, the gas fees are going to be sky, you know, sky high. So let me just show you the difference between... Um, you know, like NFTs on mainnet versus NFTs on Polygon. So if we go to, I don't know, let's click, let's click into like a random NFT, right? Um, this is like a solid floor price, right? It's like 0.2 ETH. That's not, it's like around like 400 bucks or 500 bucks. All right. So if we, I think, it, it, you know, even if we place a bid, right? I'm going to show you the gas fees that it takes to, oh, right. Sorry. I need, I need West. So let's see here. So first of all, you need to convert your your ETH to West, and already that's going to be like a solid. So if we go to if we go from Ether to West, 
Uh, you're still doing this via Uniswap, but uh, probably not three ETH, but here you go. Um, so let's do like, for example, let's just do one ETH, right? And if we wanted to do one, one ETH, um, so currently, so as far as I know, at least currently the gas fees are really low, but um, I assure you that like this is oh, well, I mean this is still ten dollars, right? So if this is ten dollars, and and typically just saying like gas fees are typically higher than this, um, I'm actually really surprised that this is actually ten dollars right now, because <laughs> that means I can uh, go ahead and actually go swap, you know, for relatively cheap. Um, but if we switch on over to Polygon, so. We go on so OpenZ does have polygon support. Um let's go on to polygon punks. Right. Um and then let's switch our uh let's, let's switch our network over to the polygon mainnet. And as you can see here, uh, so, right, okay, so here we go. I, I, I don't, I don't know yet if this is on mainnet. I know we switch on over to Polygon for now, but yeah, let me see here. Right, okay, so we are in Polygon right now, and um, first of all, we got, we got to just sign in, and uh, so. This is going to be kind of like a, just a general onboarding process. You obviously don't have to follow this. This is just to make sure that you do have funds on the Polygon network. Um, I think I showed in a previous video how you can use uh, wallet.polygon.technology to uh, get a fee on OnRamp. But if you didn't watch that, uh, just really quickly, you can do you can click onto the wallet, sign in, and just sign this little transaction. Or it's not a transaction, but just a signature request. And then um, you can come on over here, move funds on a Polygon, or from Ethereum to Polygon, that's fine too. But if you want to do on-ramp payments, there is a lot of various services for you to just board directly on the Polygon. So there's a guide here that says uh, essentially how you can buy NFTs from Polygon. So if you want to, uh, you can uh, so effectively switch over to Polygon to reduce the uh, amount of gas fees that you see previously. Even though that was just, you know, a solid $10, um, gas fees are typically higher than that. I've had to pay, like, around $50 to mint a $50 NFT before, and I wasn't really satisfied with that. So, um, if you want to make your app, or once again, really accessible, you can go on Polygon. So, if we go on, uh, right here, there's a little documentation on how to uh, buy NFTs on Polygon. So, you can make sure to toggle on polygon in the chains category and uh, here we go you, there's a ton of various different nfts um for you know that, that that are already deployed on polygon let's see if we you know i guess if we want to buy like a burger flipper right um check this little box here so uh once you come into here uh it'll essentially when you click buy now openc will prompt you to um deposit eth onto polygon if you don't have um, Polygon ETH. But what you can do is go onto uh, SushiSwap, trade, swap, and then you can swap some of your Matic. Oh, I'm still on mainnet. So we're gonna just switch on over to Polygon. All right, while well, well, that loads, um, but essentially uh, you can buy any of these NFTs uh, for some ETH, but just make sure to uh, already have some Polygon ETH on hand, um, and uh, you'll be you'll be all set. So once again, if this is your first time buying an item on Polygon, you'll uh, essentially ask, be asked to unlock Polygon trading on your wallet, and this is kind of going to be the screen, and this is only going to happen once. So. 
all you need to do is confirm checkout once you have your uh, Polygon ETH. And um, you can sign the message. And the transaction fees will be much cheaper than this because, um, you know, or, uh, much cheaper than the $10 that you saw previously because we're doing this on Polygon. Um, so if this thing will load, that'll be great. But if it doesn't, I can... Oh, sweet. All right. So... We can swap some of our Matic into uh, Wrapped ETH. And all I need to do is just kind of give this a reloading. I'm sure. And then swap on to Polygon Mainnet. I have a broken RPC on one of them, so that's why I need to think of swap again. There we go. So if you want to switch, like, let's say, like, 10, right, into West ETH. Right, you can, you can, as you can see, you can swap some. And once you confirm the swap for essentially less than anything, it's it submits a transaction. And transaction should be ready in like around 20 seconds. Um, here it is. So now, I guess, I don't know, maybe I should have swapped more. Oh, never mind. Here it is. So let's just like buy this thing, right? Like buy this random thing. So I, I, can, I can just unlock my currency, and all this needs is just a small signature. And if I wanted to buy this, all I need to do is just uh, sign this transaction. Oh, I think... Uh... Oh, interesting. So let's just refresh then. Oh, okay. See, great. So um, I bought this thing uh, at uh, a solid um, two ETH, or uh, sorry, not two ETH, um, two dollars at point oh oh seven ETH. Uh, I bought this just to kind of demo the fact that you can well buy something for really really cheap on polygon without you being charged for like a solid ten dollars um so you know for stuff like this right it wouldn't make sense to deploy on mainnet because um you're gonna be paying twelve dollars for buying something that's two dollars um so why not pay nothing for buying something that's two dollars in terms of well extra fees right um i probably shouldn't have bought this just because i don't <laughs> i think this is going to be pretty useless but um just to kind of demo the fact that you can actually buy something um, on Polygon. Sweet. So um, kind of now I want to introduce a little bit of uh, DAO tooling. And if you, uh, and this is just an example, you don't have to, um, you know, go specifically onto XDAO. But um, if you want to create a DAO or invest into a DAO that invests, you know, uh, for essentially uh, giving them you know, a, a, essentially some of your money to for them to manage and hopefully turn return like a return. Um, you can just click easily on invest and then make it like a private offer. And um, some of these are disabled, but there's also better, um, you know, other dApps that uh, are similar in terms of, you know, DAO tooling wise, or you can even create your own DAO. Um, I'm pretty sure Alchemy... Uh, pretty sure Alchemy gives uh, Polygon support, but if you don't, uh, or if they don't, um, there is plenty of... Sorry, I could just sign in here. Right, great. So, alright, so so Alchemy only uh, serves Mainnet or XDAI, but um, there is plenty of other like DAO-creating platforms on Polygon that you can uh, check out. Um, if you actually know one, uh, be sure to leave one in the comments, uh, so then I guess other people can also find one too. But, um, yeah, I think that, I think that about wraps it for this small dap showcase. If you liked it, um, be sure to keep watching, um, till the end of the next video, um, where I'm going to be just kind of introducing our new, a new, uh, more technical course that we're going to do on Polygon Academy, uh, on, uh, um, you know, for Polygon Academy on Morales. And... Yeah, thanks so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate your attention, and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks. All right, time for you to build your first starter app. 
fork this repo and the uh, the repo that I've ex attached in the external resources section and boot it up using uh, either Truffle or Ganache, or if you want to, you can do the hard hat version. And this is essentially kind of just to get you to deploy your first ever dApp on Polygon, the instructions and essentially how to build this or boot this up and various descriptions on what's actually going on um, are in the GitHub readme. And if you want to uh, go with the more modern, newer and simpler setup, feel free to go with Hardhat, but um, definitely do try out the Truffle one as it's highly recommended. And yeah, once you're done with this one, uh, you know, I hope you have a great time trying to deploy a dApp on Polygon, uh, both the mainnet and testnet. Um, and uh, yeah, once you're done with this, let me know, um, you know, I guess down in the comments what you thought of it. And uh, yeah, feel free to head to the next lecture. All right, time for you to deploy your first ever NFTs. Uh, same drill as last time. Feel free to go to the GitHub repo, fork it, and uh, get started building. Um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a little bit different of a solidity contract than the first time, um, and somewhat similar of a front end. But um, you'll be sure you'll you'll figure it out. I think using the uh, the readme instructions, this should be relatively easy. So um, yeah, feel free to complete this one and then move on to building your first ever DeFi app. All right, similar drill last time. You're going to deploy your first DeFi dApp onto Polygon. Um, fork the repo and uh, get started. There's multiple resources attached in the external resources section. Um, and uh, yeah, two separate repos, actually. So um, yeah, feel free to give those a try and uh, move on to the next one when you're ready. All right, so if you're uh, essentially wanting more dApps and more scaffolded dApps to build on, or if you're just participating in the hackathon and you want uh, your boilerplate code out of the way, feel free to go head, head on over to uh, Polygon Academy, which is uh, attached in the external uh, resources links uh, of this uh, section of module. And uh, there will be plenty of resources for you to build there. Um, yeah, and uh, have fun with that. All right, first of all, uh, let's get into a little bit of dApp building prerequisites. Um, so uh, if you don't, if you're not familiar with smart contract development, uh, feel free to start with the Solidity documentation and uh, examples that I have attached here. Um, I personally use these for um, Solidity development testing anyway, so I just thought to share these with you because I thought these were really good resources. Sounds good. Um, and there will be a few more resources coming up. Uh, feel free to check those out as well. The second resource I have for you are a few uh, front end tutorials and examples. There are already some uh, in the Crypto Zombies, which I am about to show you in the next lecture um, module section. But um, the main libraries you're going to be using is Ethers.js. And if you want to, you can use Waffle as well. Um, I've also attached documentation uh, for that here. So do check that out. And last but not least, I've included some very, very basic Solidity practice via Crypto Zombies also on this. Um, this lecture pod. Um, so uh, if you want to actually get some solidity practice while doing this in a really like tutorial friendly way, here's a good resource for that.